Now we cross back to my colleague Tumela Mututwane, who's at Nazrek. Good morning yet again, Tumela. I understand that you have Mr. Mantasha with you now. Absolutely, Mfundo. This is indeed the final day of the ANC's National Elective Conference. We're still going to get into, of course, uh, what's uh, not only to be expected for today, but take some reflections, not only with our analysts, but also with uh, one of the top seven newly elected candidates. That's the, of course, newly elected chairperson, Mr. Gwede Mandashe. Mr. Mandashe, good morning to you. How are you, How are you feeling? How morning. are you feeling? Morning. 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 Uh, we're finishing the conference. It's heavy. It's difficult. Yeah. It's uh, draining us. <laughs> work long hours we sleep few hours and we will continue work yeah it was a lot of work and um, i saw one particular clip from young lions of the anc saying oh boy so will and we <laughs> uh, the, the, the problem that they are going to learn in the process mm. is that generational mix is the best philosophy than does the youth take over yeah uh, because you combine energies of young people with wisdom of old, old people. Mm. That combination is a winning for me. So, so how then do you uh, uh, almost strengthen discipline? Because we've all witnessed ill discipline in this conference as a country. I think there were even questions to say, uh, does the country want to be led by ill-disciplined uh, members of the ANC who can't even respect one another? Is that a priority for you? No. The, the, the reality is that the ANC has grown younger. Mm. And when a, a party grows younger, there's a lot of work and investment that you must make in converting that, con 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 that quantity to quality. And the pace of, con of converting quantity to quality is a function of the number of blows and the frequency of blows mm. you throw at the quantity. Uh, we've got the people, we've got the numbers, we've got human beings. We must just intensify our education and engagement with them. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Mr. Mandashe, because I wanted to talk about the Oartambo School of Leadership. What are you doing about it uh, in terms of strengthening political education within the organization? The, 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 the distance learning helps. Actually, I've never been to a university campus. I did uh, distance learning. Mm. It's a longer formula of acquisition of knowledge. Uh, physical attendance move faster when you have a tutor in front of you who can pay personal attention to you and your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I think the distance component of the uh, our time was a leadership school is quite important. But what we are lacking is the interaction of dealing with the people physically, mm -hmm. face to face. Uh, I don't know how we are going to do that. Uh, I can tell you that when you chair a meeting of ill-disciplined people, it trains you as a chairperson because you must deal with things that are not in the meeting procedures. Right. When people will ask for uh, order and you discover, say, okay, right, go ahead with your point of order, and you discover that you use the word order to get an opportunity to make a contribution. Mm. And that means you don't understand basic principles of running a meeting. So we'll go to those details if we want to improve the situation. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the OR Tambo School of Leadership not only in a sense of it being a political uh, school for the organization, but also the quality of leadership that you want to escrapulate from the organization. You came out hammering the use of money, which you say is a threat to quality leadership. And I'm talking about the use of money in a context of buying votes, candidates using it within the organization to climb up the, the leadership ladder. What's then to be done with money versus leadership? Can I tell you, yeah. if there's one battle that uh, we almost lost, is the battle and fight against money. You, you know, uh, in the past we had this thing that money is used and so forth. Mm. This time around, you find people at branch level, at regional level, phoning you have this number of delegates, mm. uh, please give me so much money. How much are we talking here? Yeah, it depends. Uh, uh, one, one person phoned me and said, I've won 40 delegates, give me 100,000 rand. Mm. And I tell him that if I had 100,000 rand, I would go to an auction and buy sheep or cattle. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't give it to you. Not a buffalo, you wouldn't buy a buffalo. Uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have high, high fence for wild animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, but definitely the issue of money, you've seen it. I mean, even also it's a with... It's it, How are you going to deal with it? Because also, Cyril Ramaphosa's campaign has been accused of running a multi-million campaign. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he scaled down this year. Last time, 
he was in trouble mm. about that. But today it was more complex because it was widespread. For example, there was a man who was campaigning for a treasurer general. Mm. He worked in the office of the president. We raised our concern. This person is in your office. He's going around buying votes. Mm. Please deal with that issue. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, he's not elected treasurer general of the ANC. But uh, if you go around displaying money, it's the worst way of dealing with things. Mm. Then you spoil these delegates. When they talk to you, don't give them money. Mm. They think that you are sick. Yeah. I, I mean, I was concerned when I saw some delegates even crying, and I wondered, are they crying because they lost money? Yeah. Or are they crying because they genuinely believed in their candidate? But I suppose it's what you're saying about, you know, that Western ideology that you refer to of money versus quality leadership. Mr. Mandashe, Adam Habib came here guns blazing on Twitter. Not sure if you saw this. He that... Adam Habib, the former vice chancellor okay. of this university. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I want to quote him here. He says, you are post-apartheid South Africa's most destructive politician after Ace and Zuma. This, of course, after you being newly elected, and we're talking leadership here. How would you react? Uh, Adam Abib is never, I was never a student, okay? Uh, I did my master's at VETS, okay? Mm. Uh, and I never interacted with him. Mm. So if he made his conceptions about me, when he has never talked to me, it's, it's question of a function of analysis. Uh, I don't know how destructive am I, uh, I know that if you give me a task, I execute. Mm. And leadership is about execution. It's not about pleasing Adam as Bib or somebody else. That's not what it is all about. It's about executing the task given to you. Yeah. Uh, Adam and Bib may be influenced by a number of lobbies. I always run, having run, running battles with lobbies of renewables, for example, who think that we must just do away with everything and give it to renewables. If he has been in the clutches of that lobby, he will say what he say. Is that why you were equally hard on Andre de Reta? You've been calling him a policeman. Uh, no. Some attribute him resigning to you, saying no, that you but, sabotaged but, him but, as CEO of his company. Actually, you must always respect something called editorial freedom. Mm. I never called de Reta a policeman. I never did that. Mm. An article yes. wrote and described him as a policeman. Quoted you. No, not as having said. Mm. If, if you can pull that, if there's any article written and put in inverted commas, yes. Mandaz is saying, the is a man. policeman. Uh, I will own up and try to look into that. But if you just say that in the editorial room, I can't mm. do anything with that. I have no control over that. Mm. All I said was that, and it's usually like ESCO, uh, is going to harm itself and harm the reader. The reader is an alpha. And, and somebody asked me, what is an alpha? Mm. I said, it's, a, it's an executive in business who walks on water. OK, walks on water. When he walks in the room, investors listen and all that. Mm. But if you take an alpha, you put him in an institution that requires a fixer, you are not, uh, it's not a question of incompetence. It's a question of mismatch of the required skills and the challenges of the institution. And I think that analysis of mine was correct. Mm -hmm. So what's to happen now with uh, uh, load shedding? I mean, yesterday the newly elected SG saying uh, load shedding has to be killed, uh, the restructuring of ESCO needs to be imminent. How do you think we'll get there as a country, as a matter of urgency? A matter of urgency in an institution like ESCO, it talks about three, four, six, 12 months. That's urgency. Mm. Uh, it will mean, in the first place, ESCOM will have to advertise and appoint a CEO. Okay. And uh, the CEO is also given notice is going to be leaving. It means at the top there will be vacuum. It gives an opportunity to line functional department to actually make a thorough selection to appoint people to those responsible positions. Mm. And if you do that, that is the first step to the issue. Because it must be people who know what happens to the gap between 26,000 megawatts and 48,000 megawatts that is connected but not giving us energy. Because if we actually get energy from the 22,000 megawatts, which is a gap, uh, you will go a long way in resolving the current problem. Mm -hmm. Then the build program of renewables, gas, nuclear, can follow 
not under pressure. I want to come back to, 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 to Nasrek issues and also talk about uh, the top seven. We're seeing more women uh, ever before within the top seven, three women out of uh, seven. But why the significance of having two deputy secretary general? One would argue that the ANC has no money. You've always uh, cried that, you know, you have financial issues, uh, issues around resources. Why the significance of having two DSGs? The, the, uh, one of the resolutions before conference is a, is, a, is a resolution that says it is not necessary to have TG full time. Mm. It's not necessary to have as many NECs in the head office. But you need to strengthen the secretariat office because that is the nerve center. And that nerve center is going to be able to energize the bigger part of the organization. That is the thinking. And what took you so long then to have a first woman treasurer general in 110 years? Uh, it's because uh, in the 110 years, it will be 111 years right. in January, uh, no woman was nominated. That's one of the reasons. Mm. Um, this time around, a woman was nominated from the floor, right. contested the men successfully and became a treasurer general. Why so long? Where's the ANC Women's League? Where's the engagement as yeah, members? Leave the, 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 the long. You, you know, the people are, are very lazy to read the history of the ANC. They don't read it. Mm. They make assumptions. You know, the ANC started as, as an African organization. Um, in the first ANC conference, uh, we were told mm. there was one delegate who was a female. One. And at that time, they were not in any place close to leadership of the ANC. Mm. And the ANC converted itself and democratized itself. As it moved on, it began to open space for women, mm. and mm. women came in. If you, you remember, the first Women's League was only formed in 1943, you see, with an ANC which was formed in 1912, right. that chose the movement. And only in the Murugoro Congress in 1967 did the ANC begin to say, uh, this is a, 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 an organization that is open to membership mm. of other races other than Africans. Not leadership, mm. membership. Right. So the ANC is evolving. and. It is involving and it, it, it interacts with society, developing society, influence developments in the ANC. So speaking of that diversity, not only in membership, are you developing in diversity in the top seven leadership? Because you've been criticized by not having any minority representation uh, within the top seven. This is, of course, putting the, the women aspect aside. Can I, can I tell you, one of the most unfortunate concepts is this concept of minorities. That's why if you go to the literature of the ANC, that word is not found. I don't know if you have noticed mm. that. The ANC always talk about blacks in general and Africans in particular. Mm. And that formulation didn't come from the sky. It developed because of the depth and the extent of repression and oppression during the apartheid years. And there was the focus on Africans in particular, and blacks in general. Mm. And it described those Africans, if you go to study in tactics of the ANC, it will give you a list of people who are regarded as Africans in particular, which include Koi and San, by the way. Mm. I, I always remind people this, mm. because they normally say, we are colored, and say, colored is a foreign description of Koi and San, and the mixture of everything. But Koi and San are regarded as uh, as Africans, and they come to the ANC, one of the things that must be appreciated to actually impact on leadership is the presence of that constituency in the board of the ANC. Mm. If you go to the Western Cape or the Northern Cape, there's no shortage of that leadership because there, for example, you find that people from colored communities a majority, mm. and therefore they are sent to leadership of the ANC. If you go to the ANC uh, in the Northern Cape, whether it is African or anybody, they speak Africans. Everybody speaks Africans. Mm. So that is where we are. 
and then they must evolve. And, and, and I suppose my question again is, do you share the same sentiments when it comes to provinces? Because the Zikwato, on the other hand, saying it's concerning that KZN is not represented once again in the top seven leadership. But he says this is because this is where your electoral fortune comes from, given the numbers within the KZN province. No, but uh, when people make such statements, they must analyze the outcomes of elections. Just to uh, do yourself a favor, do the analysis and appreciate the fact that there is a fast decline in Gauteng, which is unfortunate for the ANC. Mm. We must invest in that. But if we don't know that we get overpowered by ego and uh, ignore that reality, we're going to have a problem. Case is another strong point, and that uh, in the ANC it has the biggest membership, and therefore it has the biggest delegation in this conference. Right. Now, outcome of conference took to a strategy okay uh, if they had the wrong strategy for the conference the outcome will reflect that you know you know a person called peter trecker writes a very important interesting concept that culture eats strategy for breakfast okay mm. a culture is strategy for breakfast you know what that means is that if you have a culture of dominance mm. and you assume that people will just fall in line, it will destroy your most brilliant strategy and it will reflect on the outcome.